1993 was a pivotal year when Israel and Palestine were on the verge of achieving a peaceful resolution. But what happened afterward, the situation only continued to worsen over time. Today, there's an ongoing conflict between them. To really understand the current crisis, it's crucial to look back at their history. That's why in today's video, we're going to dive into the detailed history of these two nations. We'll explore how Israel was established and how the conflict with Palestine began. Our story starts thousands of years ago. You've probably heard about the horrific treatment of the Jews under Hitler. But did you know that the persecution of Jews goes back thousands of years? It's believed that Jesus Christ was born into a Jewish family. And some Christians believe that certain Jews were responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This belief persisted among Christians for many decades and centuries. Around 1000 years ago, during the Crusades, a significant number of Christians killed Jews. At that time, a lot of false rumors were spread about Jews, including accusations that Christians drank the blood of Jewish children or used them in religious rituals. Such misinformation fueled widespread hatred against Jews. The level of animosity they faced was likely unmatched by any other religious group over the past thousand years. After 1800, the hatred toward Jews wasn't just based on religious grounds, they were also perceived as a distinct ethnic group. Because of these factors, by the late 1800s, Jews living worldwide began to feel that no country would accept them. If we want to live in peace, we have to create our own country, a Jewish state. There was an Austro-Hungarian journalist named Theodor Herzl who initiated a new political movement in his pamphlet from 1896. This movement was called Zionism. Herzl argued that Jews should have their own separate country. This wasn't a new idea for that era. Since 1870, many organizations that called themselves lovers of Zion were already advocating for this concept due to these factors in 1881. The first large-scale migration of Jews to the Palestine area took place. The Jews established several permanent settlements there and began living in the region. But why did they choose Palestine? Because it is a sacred area for the Jews. Jerusalem is considered the holiest place for them. Remember, at that time, there was no Israel, no Gaza and no West Bank. The entire region was known as Palestine, which was part of the Ottoman Empire. Within the Ottoman Empire, Christians, Muslims and Jews generally lived together in peace without much conflict. Now let's fast forward to the year 1915 during World War I. The British, French and Arab revolutionaries were fighting against the Ottoman Empire. The British, being quite cunning, promised the Arab revolutionaries that if they helped defeat the Ottomans, they would give them control of Palestine. The Arab revolutionaries were fighting to create a unified Arab nation, aiming to merge regions from Syria to Yemen into one Arab country. Meanwhile, the British made a similar promise to the Jews, assuring them that they would support the creation of a separate Jewish state in Palestine. Why did they do this? To win favor with American Jews and sway American politics, but in reality, the British had secretly struck a deal with the French. Once the Ottoman Empire was defeated at the end of World War I, the Middle East was divided between the British and the French. And the British took control of the Palestine region from 1918 to 1948. The entire area of Palestine was under British rule. During this time, Hitler was also rising to power in Germany. Millions of Jews were brutally murdered in a horrific genocide. Jews from across Europe, under Hitler's control, fled to various countries to escape the horrors, with some finding refuge in America, while many others headed to Palestine. At first, the British allowed them to enter, but later they imposed restrictions which fueled the rise of an Israeli nationalist movement in Palestine. Simultaneously, the Palestinian nationalist movement gained momentum, and Palestinians began pushing for their own state. Eventually, the British decided they couldn't handle it any longer and declared, I can't take this anymore, I'm out. Jewish people, establish your own state and Palestinians, create your own country. I just can't manage this anymore. So the responsibility was handed over to the United Nations and the British withdrew from Palestine. The United Nations then devised a plan to partition the land, determining how much would be allocated to the Jewish state and how much to the Palestinian state. According to this plan, about 57% of the territory would go to the Jewish state and 43% to the Palestinian state, Jerusalem. With its profound historical significance to Jews, Christians and Muslims was designated to be under international control. The Jewish people accepted this plan and named their new country Israel and Israel was officially established in 1948. However, the neighboring Arab countries were unhappy with this arrangement. They believed it was just another way for the British to continue their colonialism. So they launched a war against Israel, vowing not to let the Jews keep even a small piece of land. This conflict is known as the First Arab-Israeli War of 1948 and it's significant because more than five countries were fighting against the newly formed state. The Jews living in Israel were acutely aware of how the world had treated them just five years earlier, especially under Hitler's regime, and now they faced a new war from surrounding Arab nations. If they didn't fight to survive, they would never have a chance, so they fought with everything they had, and remarkably, Israel emerged victorious from the conflict, defeating all the opposing countries. When the war ended in 1949, according to the UN partition plan, Israel had occupied many areas of Palestine, the Gaza Strip fell under Egyptian control, and the West Bank came under Jordanian control, which left little to no land for the Palestinians. More than 700,000 Palestinians were forced to leave their homes and become refugees in neighboring Arab countries, an event known as the 1948 Palestinian Exodus. Then in 1967, the Second Arab-Israeli War broke out. 
lasting for six days, and Israel won decisively. Not only did Israel take control of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, but it also occupied the entire Sinai Peninsula which it seized after the war. The Palestinians were determined to establish their own country, leading to the creation of the Palestine Liberation Organization in 1964. Initially, their goal was to achieve their state through armed struggle and to eliminate the existence of any country like Israel. As a result, both the USA and Israel labeled them as a terrorist organization. However, it's important to note that what one person may view as terrorism, another might see as a revolutionary struggle for independence. In 1973, a third Arab-Israeli war erupted. However, this isn't central to our story because nothing significant changed afterward. In 1974, the United Nations General Assembly officially recognized the Palestine Liberation Organization as the representative of the Palestinians. In 1979, peace talks between Egypt and Israel were successful, making Egypt the first Arab country to officially recognize Israel as a legitimate state. Following these talks, Israel returned the Sinai Peninsula, which it had previously captured back to Egypt. Both the Egyptian Prime Minister and the Israeli Prime Minister were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts in achieving this treaty. Unfortunately, two years later, the Egyptian Prime Minister was assassinated by right-wing extremists in Egypt. People question how Egypt's Prime Minister could have made such a compromise with Israel. From 1967 to 1980, Israel occupied the Gaza Strip and the West Bank for over a decade. During this period, many Israelis began establishing colonies and settlements in the West Bank with support from the Israeli government either directly or indirectly. The lower housing prices drew some people while others were motivated by religious nationalism. Some Israelis, particularly the more extreme nationalists, claimed that the entire West Bank belonged to them and thus began settling in the area. The international community views these settlements as illegal because they violate the United Nations partition plan and Palestinians see them as a form of colonization, essentially their country being overtaken by Israelis. In 1992, Israel gains a new prime minister named Pitzek Rabin, who declares that the Palestine Liberation Organization is not a terrorist group, but rather a group seeking their own state and argues that they should be granted their country. Israel officially recognizes the PLO and in return the PLO officially recognizes Israel as a state. This leads to the Oslo Accords of 1993 where for the first time both sides discuss how to peacefully divide the land and establish a Palestinian state. As a result, in 1994, the Palestinian government is established for the first time under the name Palestinian National Authority. At this point, many areas in the West Bank have been settled by Israelis with support from the Israeli government. Palestinians are left living in a few designated areas. The West Bank is divided into three zones area aware the Palestinian government has control area B where both governments share control and area C where the Israeli government maintains control. The United Nations partition plan seems far from being realized. By 1994, Palestine could only claim a few parts of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip where it could begin establishing its own state. The good news was that by this time Israel and Palestine were very close to finding a peaceful solution. As a result, in 1994, Yasser Arafat, the president of the Palestinian Authority, and Yitzhak Rabin, Israel's prime minister, were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. However, this progress was tragically undone when extreme right-wing Jewish individuals assassinated the Israeli prime minister, a Jewish extremist, Israeli Prime Minister at close range with a pistol in 1995. These extremists opposed any compromise with Palestine, arguing that giving them only a small portion of land was unacceptable. They wanted all of Palestine to be under Israeli control. The situation worsened due to these extremist individuals. About five to six years before this incident, a group of Islamic militants came together in Palestine to form Hamas. The Hamas group criticized the Palestine Liberation Organization for becoming too secular and compromising too much with Israel. Hamas declared its goal to eliminate Israel from the map and vowed to fight against it. With the signing of the peace treaty between Palestine and Israel in 1994, Jewish extremists despised their prime minister, while Hamas began to oppose the PLO. They resented the PLO for making concessions to Israel. The violence in Israel further strengthened the dominance of extreme right-wing groups on both sides, leading to increased polarization. The animosity between Israelis and Palestinians intensified significantly. Although there was some hatred before, it surged after 1995. By around 2002, violent protests erupted on both sides, resulting in the deaths of more than 100 Israelis and Palestinians on each side. Clashes broke out on the ground, leading to a growing mistrust between the two groups. This distrust prompted Israel to start constructing walls around its settlements. The permanent residences established by settlers in the West Bank became fortified with security guards and checkpoints were set up making life even more difficult for Palestinians. In 2006, the Hamas militant group contested the elections in Palestine and emerged victorious. They defeated the PO party known as Fatah but with a very narrow margin. Out of 132 seats, Hamas won 74. However, following this victory, a civil war erupted in 2007 between the two political parties within Palestine. 
supporters of both parties clashed, leading to what became known as the Battle of Gaza in 2007. This conflict resulted in Palestine being divided into two parts. The biggest question that arises is what solution can be found for this situation. If you look at the map of Palestine, you'll see that the West Bank is so fragmented that even if a separate government were established for this region today, it would be challenging to maintain coherence with such scattered territories. Some people believe that a two-state solution is still possible here, where the area is divided into Israel and Palestine based on the 1967 borders. Others suggest that we should follow the United Nations partition plan and allocate territory according to the 1948 boundaries, giving specific areas to both Israel and Palestine. However, if we proceed with this plan, the most pressing question arises what will happen to the permanent settlements and colonies that Israel has built within Palestinian territory. These settlements are fully developed communities where people have built homes, schools and hospitals. There are wide roads and infrastructure in place. But what would happen to these areas if they were handed over to Palestine. There are hundreds of thousands of people living in these West Bank settlements. So I want to ask you, what do you think the solution to this crisis should be? How can these two countries be divided fairly? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you found this video educational. If there's one takeaway from this video, it's the importance of standing up against extremist groups. See you in the next video.